Now that we have understood and implemented single touch attribution models, let us move on to how do we build multi touch attribution models. In fact, before building attrib attribution, multi touch attribution models, let's try to understand the concepts behind multi touch attribution models, right? So, like uh, quickly summarized in the previous video, while single touch only gives credit to one marketing touch point, however, the multi touch assumes that all the touch points play some role in driving a conversion, right? So, so here we were gonna look at most popular touch, multi touch attribution models, which include linear attribution model, position based, which is popularly called as U shaped attribution model, and then we have position decay attribution model. So these multi touch attribution models have become important for marketers, especially those looking to measure the impact of digital campaigns. This is because they provide a more granular personal level view than traditional aggregate methods such as you know media mix modeling first and the simplest multi touch attribution model predominantly called as linear attribution model so this touch point gives equal credit or equal weightage to all the touch points in a journey suppose let's say if you look at this image if the user has four touch points in his journey each of those touch points gets equal weightage which is 25 percent 25 percent 25 percent and 25 percent suppose it had like five touch points each each touch point would have got 20 percent of the weightage the advantage of the model is that it's easy to implement and it's better than all single touch attribution models because we are we are trying to attribute each of the ch channels in some other other way with equal weightages the disadvantage on the other side is However, in reality, consumers aren't equally impacted by all the kind of touch points or channels, right? So now moving on to how do we build it? So once we understood what linear model is, it's important for us to build. Uh, it's important for us to understand how do we implement it. So again, we're going to have a simple function defined, which is a linear model where we take input as the data, which what is the conversion column? What is the channel column and what are the user ID? So in our case, user ID is cookie or you know channel column is channel and conversion column is conversion and dt data is saved as date or sorry data right so keeping uh, all of this data in mind we're going to have simple aggregation and rule based logic here where at first we're going to just filter out for the column where the conversions happened or, or rows where the conver conversion happened and we're going to capture those cookies id or cookie index against those and then we're going to save it in the new so we're going to call y is equal to dt where you're going to create new column and then we're going to pass in is in true right where now we're going to have dt underscore conversion uh data frame with us now here we're going to take actually the count click count is the total number of clicks visited by an user and then we're going to have an adding click count to the filter data where the conversions happened right now we're going to divide each of these and assign the weights in a linear function where it gets if the count is let's say if the number of uh, touch points in a user journey is 10 we're gonna get equal attribution or weightage to each of those channels which is 10 percent and then getting the mean weightage for every channel right because at the end we want to finally see how our each channels are performing so 16.28 are of the times facebook got you know uh, facebook was a channel which helped us convert or drive revenues right so finally if you pass on each of these data points through this linear model function you're gonna get against each of the channels what is an average weight which is contributing to our conversions so if you look at it facebook only gets 16 percent while the uh, leader is paid search which is with 27 percent and obviously the online display as well so if you look at it in our single touch attribution model these two were almost getting on the lower side of the weightages right however facebook and instagrams were dominating but in the multi-touch or in the linear attribution model where it gives equal weightages to all the touch points in a journey if you you see here that online displays and paid search are dominating while facebook and instagram are not so this gives us a clear strategy in terms of why can't we just rely on one models what is the need of multi-touch attribution model what are the needs of probabilistic models right the results are not consistent they are so dynamic as we move along from one approach to other approach however you know single set attribution all of the three models had kind of similar outcomes but when we move on to our multi touch attribution models the outcomes are really dynamic and then we finally going to talk about how each of these weightages against each of these channels are through the uh, you know histogram plot or probably we call it as bar plot as well where you see online display ad paid sets are dominating almost twice as the rest of the other three channels right so before we move on to the position based or u-shaped attribution model i would let all of you to kind of guess what it could be so we're going to cover 
position based or u-shaped attribution model in our coming video but before that before you watch that video can you take a guess what it could be now that you have understood last test attribution model first test attribution model last non-direct test attribution model and linear attribution model i believe you all are in a position where you can guess what the position based or u-shaped as the name recommend this model might look like 